I welcome everyone today, our doctrinal discussion corner. We continue on Christ's doctrine. We have part six today. We have the Son of Man. We know emotional. Who are you emotional attached to? We determine your actions, your motives. And most of the time, your emotional attachment determines your actions and choices. Is it according to the will of God? The will of God, it must be certain in our life. God has will for everyone born here on earth. And if we can see in Christ Jesus today, he came to do the will of God the Father. There's a will for every soul born here on earth. You did not come to this earth by chance. You did not come to this earth by, it's okay, there's a mistake, something happened. And so as some mud parents always say, we, we were not planning this and it happened. God has will for everybody. So the will of God in your life must be done. And Jesus came to die and he died. He paid the price. He came. He completed the will of God the Father. So you and I, whatever choices we make in life, we must consider the will of God. Emotional attachment, who are you emotional attached to? Are you attached to your God? Who made you who you are today? Whose will is in his hand? Whose your will is in his hand? Who has great plans for you? We determine your actions. So we want to be very careful, okay? The Son of Man, here Christ indicates himself. We see in the book of First John chapter 1, the book of John chapter 151. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of god ascending and descending upon the son of man christ is the son of man the son of god he put himself the son of man praise the lord i want you to i want us to flow understand one thing the doctrine of jesus christ have been so uh, kind of in these last days uh, uh have been all twisted many have made it to suit their own understanding and if you see some People in the body of Christ, they, you know, in some, in some religious gathering, they create rules, they create doctrines to suit themselves and also to be the way they want it to be. That is why it's good we have to be very, very knowledgeable of the word of God, very, very knowledgeable of doctrine of Christ, doctrine of God, doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Now we are dealing with the doctrine of Christ. Today we have part six of the doctrine of Christ and it's the son of man. He is the son of man. He is the son of God. Now we see in Matthew 16, 13, self designation. He, he, he designated who he is here. He, he was here. And let us see it's in the book of Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, say, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He is the son of man. He is the son of God. He is God himself. For him to be the, the son of God, he is God. Christ is God, but he came 100% man like you and I to do the will of God the Father. The will of God the Father is very important in your life, in my life, so that we do not make mistakes. So we do not get discouraged, discouraged because of what is happening in our life today, happening in the world today, something we experience every day, what we come across every day, having confidence in him, be rooted in him, attached to him who have paid the price for you. He is God. He, every life is in his hand. He, when he says his word, his word shall never return to him void. He can never change. He has will and plan for all of us. That's why you do not attach, you get yourself emotionally attached to another. Attach yourself to him who has the right to, to take life and also right to, take, to give the life, okay? So that is very important. He designates himself. He is the son of God. He is the son of man. He is for humanity. We see in the book of Matthew eleven nineteen, the son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a man glutinous and a wine biber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of his children. Now, I want us to look at something here. Because Jesus had to bring himself down, get involved with the commoners, does not make, him, does not, does not make anybody look at we Christians. When we look at ourselves, you think that you are more superior. Somebody, I had somebody said, a, a, a preacher called um, somebody in his fold, a non-entity. <laughs> that is a dangerous thing to say. Jesus came down and he had to be like 100% man. He even those people that were considered drunkards, 
Those people were considered publicans that have no, you know, regard. Jesus became friends with them. And this is this nature of the humility of Christ. You see the humanistic nature. He was 100% man. And if we bring it to ourselves today, we don't look ourselves higher than anybody. You don't look at yourself higher esteem than another. We must look at ourselves and see that we are humble before God. That God created all humans to be equal. Whatever your position, whatever name, whatever educational background, whatever class you are, we are all 100% men. Everybody is equal before the eyes of God. It's just that God grants some people grace. Everybody has grace. Put some people in various offices, departments, jobs, and duties that they do in the, in the house of God, in the body of Christ, and in position, the source of income, what people do for a living, is on different levels, you understand? It is God that allows it to be like that, but we must not see another fellow human being, uh, my brother or my sister, somebody, and we look down on them and call them a non-entity. That is a dangerous word to say. And we see a lot of people that is in a high position they have so many um so many members so many staff people up there in the uh, in high position they look down and call people name call them a nobody call people a, a non-entity that is a dangerous thing to say brethren that is a dangerous thing to say so we look at the example of christ look at it is in the book of matthew eleven nineteen. the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man gluttonous and wine biber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of his children. If you have wisdom, you will know that nobody is higher than anybody. Jesus, look at him, he was full of wisdom. He humbled himself. He, he was friend to everyone that came across his way. So that he was even he was able to bring them for them to see the love of God. And this is wisdom. Brethren, I take another example and I like this part. So because God has placed somebody to be a leader in one position or the other, they look others as little. It is a dangerous thing. I'm telling you. So these are some examples. Jesus, the Son of God, this is the doctrine of Christ, and this is an emulation, a character we need to emulate as children of God. We don't bring ourselves higher than anybody. It is very dangerous. So the example we have in Jesus, this is wisdom. Jesus humbled himself and encouraged us to do likewise. And even in his lordship, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. That's in the book of Matthew 12, 8, 12, 12, 8. I want to say something here. When we go to church, sometimes people go to a place of worship because you want somebody to see that you are there because you have already you, you have attached yourself to somebody or this if this person doesn't pray uh, it, something will not ha miracle will not happen that is a dangerous thing to think that is a dangerous thing to say and that's a dangerous thing to you know get yourself emotionally attached to somebody because you are looking at that person as God you are making that person demigod or rather you are moving your faith the confidence faith you should have in christ you are giving it to another it is a dangerous thing so jesus is the lord of the sabbath jesus is the lord of fellowship when we go to the house of god we fellowship here now jesus is who we glorify this is one thing brethren i want us to look at it very well in these last days in any fellowship in any gathering let nobody usurp himself above anybody when we come to fellowship the whoever that is the leader or the preacher or person that is pastoring must be there to glorify Jesus because he is the Lord. It is, it is Jesus that died and paid the price and he is the head of the church. Every gathering is unto him. That's why we sing a song. The psalm said, we are gathering together unto the, unto the Lord shall the gathering of the, of the children of God be. You see? So every gathering must be unto God, unto Christ himself, because he is the head of the church. So wherever you find yourself, I always encourage, I always encourage, if you find yourself in a place, the fellowship is going on, and you see one person taking glory, one person taking I, I, one person is like, he has to be the one that will decide. He has to be the one that everybody reference before they pray. Somebody might be praying now. That person come and you know, the person stop praying. Hey, that is a demigod. If you find yourself in this kind of character, you want to return back to the Lord because this person has made a human being a God. And that's what we see in our present life today. And that's why some, the Lord was making me to understand. That's why sometimes people's prayers are not answered because their prayers are focused on a human being. That's why some prayer, people's prayers are, some people 
people's prayers are not answered, when they put their trust that it's this person that will pray and this person will make the miracle happen, no, they are moving the Lordship away from Christ and give it to human being. That person cannot answer my prayer and cannot answer your prayer. Okay, so that's another thing. He's the Son of God. He is the Lord of our fellowship. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one that we brought the church together. He is the one that bought the, bought the child with his blood, with his life, he sacrificed himself. So he is the, the, the force among, among the dead, the resurrected from the dead. And he is the, he's the head of the church. So let us not divide this. And you see, this is what is happening in the body of Christ today. People just fellowship. Oh, if it's not this person, I will not pray. If it's not this person, I will not read the Bible. It is very, very dangerous. Honestly. So let us not move the Lordship of Christ and give it to another. Jesus is the Lord of the service. He is the head of the church. He is the Lord of law, his decision stands, okay? The word of God in his word, because the Bible says that he became flesh and dwelt among us. That's in the book of John chapter 1. If you go down to 14, that's what the Bible said. So he's the head of the church. Every gardener is unto him. So he is the Lord. He's also the Messiah. If you look at the book of Luke eighteen thirty one, then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Who is this? He keeps talking about the Son of Man. Jesus is the Son of Man. He was prophesied about him. You see, um, it's, it's, it's a very, very dangerous thing for somebody to put himself in the place of Christ. And I met there was this person <laughs> that put himself high. So he, the, the grandiosity of this person, he kept calling himself the Son of Man. Yes, there are some portions of the scripture that God referred to some son of in some some apostles, some prophets in the in the scriptures, son of man, because of what they are apportioned to do at that time. Oh, you understand? So this person was putting himself as the son of man. It was it was a go it was a back and forth teaching that at a point when I you know in the psychological area. I was kind of guiding this person to go for like a psychological assessment. You see what I'm saying? So based on the little experience I have, I said you need to go for some psychological assessment so that you don't be a, a confusion, a trouble to your family because he saw himself as son of man. He saw himself as the person that wrote the book of First John in the book of Revelation chapter 1 and 3. <laughs> He put himself in the office of John, you know, it was John that God gave the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation. So he put himself in that office. I'm like, hey, so I, 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 you know, I kind of, I brought him down. I look up the, some, I, I just assessment. I just assessed him. I said, okay, this is the area you're falling into. You are making a mistake. You don't put yourself higher than your, you don't put yourself in that high office because <laughs> this is a personality that is not right. Because you are not John. You didn't write the book of Revelation. So don't put yourself in that place. He said he have the right to judge. He have the right to condemn. I try everything I could to kind of guide him. You know, he, he, he didn't know what he said. He just started cussing me out. Cussing, calling me a false prophet. Calling me a money, money. I'm after money and all that. I said, sir, I didn't ask you. I didn't prophesy to you. Number one. Number two. I never will never talk about money. So why are you calling me? I'm, I'm a money prophet. I'm a false prophet. I'm just trying to explain to you that what you are, you are reading the Bible in error, so that you don't get discouraged when things don't happen the way you you think they will happen, so that you don't deceive yourself and deceive people. And as a matter of fact, I know I kind of gave him some symptoms. You know, when people the people that have this, uh, 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 what I call it, uh, uh, medical uh, mental disorder. So the kind of behavior, the exhibition of such behaviors, so it affects families, it affects people around them, and it makes them, it's hard to treat. So I kind of explain some of this, <laughs> this to him. So boy, I'm telling you this, I'm not bringing you down, I'm, always, I'm, I'm ready to kind of correct you. He brought so many Bible verses, I'm telling you, each Bible verse he was bringing is calling himself the son of man. He was calling himself, he has a, he's an, a, he has a, a pistol. He said that... Um, he even went as far as saying that some of the book of Rev uh, the book of Revelation has already happened in his life. In his, I don't want his to call his country. That, that you know, he just kept going. So he was going so fast. I'm like, I just quickly figured it out. So I tried to guide him 
He called me names. He called me names. I said, okay, the Bible verses you are bringing, I went through all these Bible verses and I explained them to him. This is what the Bible is saying. You understand it this way, but this is what it's actually saying. So you are wrong in your interpretation. So you need the spiritual, you need them. Spiritual guidance and to understand the un, uh, understand the verses you are bringing and this spiritual inspiration you need it. So when I was <laughs> when I was getting, this guy calls me out, you know, he calls me out, call me names. I said, well, I'm trying, I'm just trying to help because I know I've seen people like this, we work with people like this in the past. So it just, I, I, I just want to guide you. So that when he start going to see um, a psychiatrist, he just have keep having session weekly or monthly, so he be able to his thought process will be able to change. This guy calls me out. He gave me more Bible verse and Bible verse. I said, "There's no need to go through these Bible verses because it's a confusion. You use it to confuse yourself. So this is one thing we must understand, brethren. That's why you see." Just come have come in encounter with this person. It not bring me to you know. Let me just widen it a bit. That's why there are some people on the platform. You have to be very careful. Sit down and listen when you want to test the spirit. Compare the word of God. Where is this person placed himself? So some people have placed themselves in this office and he's so disappointed that he said he has people under him. He's a counselor. He's a a a a, a, a some a leader. So I fear for those people under his teaching. You see what I'm saying? So we have a lot of them like that so that we don't fall into erroneous teachings that have really misled so many people today. Like some people will continue to teach and teach and teach until you see them, they get a crowd of people and they start killing those people. So Satan is so manipulative and we will, in these last days we come to a point where we just talk about the monopoly of knowledge and the teachings that have really dis that really destroyed so many people and they, even when the holy spirit is speaking they won't get it because they already use themselves to block the you know the spirit of god entrance speaking to them so their heart is already sealed so this why guys you want to be very careful jesus is the messiah there's no other he is the son of god he is the son of man the Bible referred to him as son of man. And why he used that word as son of man? Because he came he down on earth and has a mission. You see what I'm saying? So even as he humbled himself, he didn't put himself above others. I'm telling, I really love that part in Jesus. He, 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 he ate with publicans. That, that's why we read in the book of uh, Matthew eleven nineteen. He with the publicans, he ate with them. He didn't put himself high. This is spirit of humility. And this is where we find wisdom. Honestly, when we bring humble ourselves to the word of God, but you have to be very wise, very, very, you know, like um, your antenna, you know, it's like your antenna is very, very sharp. You, you, you want to catch it fast so that you will not be misled. Immediately I saw where he was going, boom, I got it right fast. And I tried to, I just started to try to redirect him, but he didn't accept where I'm, where I'm coming from. So I just want to use it to encourage everyone Wherever you go for fellowship, wherever you go to listen to somebody preach, whoever you follow on in the media, look, a lot of people are bloggers. They are making money for media. Many come online because they want to make money. They see that, you know, uh, Facebook is paying, YouTube is paying, so other media, other uh, uh, platforms are paying. They, they want to create something they will come up with. And it's so disappointing that some people are open to this a demonic spirit that are controlling these people. You see dem people with spirit of divination, the, uh, uh, sorcerers, witchcraft operating in the media, and the way they talk to people, you see they keep, as they communicate, you see them getting hold of people and creating a form of illusion in people's mind. And it has, I, I, honestly, I'm telling you, I've come across people that such things affect their homes, affect their marriage, because a lot of people reach out to me. I don't come and talk, and that is very good. Everybody's secret and counseling. We maintain everybody's secret, you understand? So, but the thing is that these forces that are operating in media, Antichrist, Satan is behind all this. But you see them, Satan will look for people that are in high position, that will have opportunity to speak to people. Boom, they take over and be getting people. That's what the spirit of Antichrist is flowing through Satan, to get people in higher position, to be able to use them. So, I just want to use this to spread out a little bit. Be very, very observant. Be very, very careful. Whatever you hear, go to the scriptures and search it. 
whatever you hear, whoever comes to counsel me, go to the scriptures and look at it, okay? So this is an example. I tried to talk to this man. He said, uh, I'm, I'm those false, you are those false prophets. I don't know you are talking like this um, because I didn't accept him making himself that he is the judge. He made himself judge. He has the right to judge. He has the right to condemn. He started cursing and cursing and <laughs> cursing me out that God has given him the right to judge and condemn because he is the son of man. You know, I just tried to make break it down for him to understand just for the fact that I was hitting that area for him to know that you are not the son of man. You, you are not Christ. Judgment is not in your hand. He gave me more, more verses as I cannot go through all those verses because I'm going to your understanding. What you, where you put yourself is not who you are. To the extent he, that's when he went back and started telling me that the book of Revelation, if I look from chapter 1 to chapter 3, was him. That God fulfilled it is through him. I said, well, this is narcissistic personality disorder. So I started guiding him. But you see, there's so many people like that. I'm telling you the truth. But because they have people up there, they are, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know. There was another person like that years back. I knew when he was starting, I was kind of monitoring this person. And then I wasn't really, I've not really gone too deep into psychology area. You know, so I have not really studied that um, that disorder very well. So I didn't really picture it out on this guy. But what helped me was, you know, I'm somebody that once I come, the Lord grant me grace and reveal, hey, look at what is going on here, look at what is going on here, watch out. And I take my, you know, I, I, I be careful. And when God reveals to me, I just wait, I'll be very careful and watch. So I didn't, then I wasn't able to place it for the disorder. For, for counseling, but I was then, God grant me grace to look at in the spiritual part that this person is, has digressed from being who he's supposed to be. Then he was seeing himself that when he prophesied, come to pass, that he can talk and somebody will die. You, you can do this and all that. And he, all this uh, religiosity, you know, religiosity, superficial righteousness was kind of flowing in there. And then that was the ministry. I think, I think I've spoken about the ministry on many other scenes. That was a place when we go, you see demonic spirit in oppression going back and forth. And you, spirit, you see, a wavering demon, a sweet demon of confusion. They just keep wavering back and forth. So, but people were kind of, it was like, they almost want to, want to worship him. But it was, you know, <laughs> I don't know why when they see me, it's always a trouble for me, you know. So at my point, when I noticed what was going on, I said, hey, this is what I saw about you. This is what I saw about you. That's not right. You know, he just cut me off like that. And hey, you are this, you are just a, a prayer, you are a woman of prayer. That's why. He said, just a gift. I saw another one. I called him. I said, sir, I saw the Holy Spirit leave you. What's going on? Honestly, it was back and forth. So when they noticed that, listen to me very well, when they noticed that you know where they're coming from, they frame something. If it's somebody that knows you, that if it's somebody that um, you kind of communicate face to face, or that do a little bit something about you, about your family, you see, they, they, they will not create a story to paint you bad. That was, that's just how it is. Just like this guy that, <laughs> that told me a, a false prophet, a prophet that I'm, I'm, I'm the people, one of them that rip people's money and all that. I didn't ask you for money. I didn't give you prophecy. I'm only teaching you, you know. So, but this other guy, he kind of made up a story that, you know, that almost affected my marriage. I'm like, I was, I was like, what is wrong with you? You got this person, this is, this is what I discussed with him. So he now have a, <laughs> a message that I'm, that how do I get money to do everything I do that I, I sleep with men and all that. And you believe that? I'm surprised at you. He said, no, because people look at him as that person I there. Because people look at him, whatever he says come to pass. I said, no, that's a wrong spirit. That's a pure wrong spirit. The spirit of divination we see, they can see what is happening, but they don't have solution. A diviner can do that. A sorcerer that we see, they don't have solution. So must you believe all this? It took a while for my husband to know, came to bed and said, hey, kid, I'm very sorry. I didn't know. I said, there are more to this, not even this one. That guy is sick. That guy, he needs, he needs, first of all, not only, first of all, not only deliverance, he needs some mental checkup. So while I'm bringing all this together, brethren, just watch out, okay? Be knowledgeable of the scripture so that when somebody is coming, Hey, let's let's go through the scripture. Let's um, let's break it down and understand it. 
And we have a lot of them on the platform today, brethren. A lot. And this is what Satan loves. To do what? Deceive, kill, and destroy. Okay? To steal from steal that calling. The gift. Twist that gift. And destroy the person's life or ministry. And this person I was telling you, the church is folded. The place of worship is folded. So we have to be very careful. Many call themselves their Lord of church because this, this ministry is under uh, God. I'm the one that the Lord used to open this ministry. My brethren, they go beyond and see themselves as God. They make themselves demigods. So be very careful. I have to spread that so that we see very well, okay? So Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiahship of Jesus, none can... None can comprehend because it was accomplished. You and I, we are saved. He is our Messiah. That's what the book of Luke 18, 13 said. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. All things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. What's that? He's going to die and pay the price. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. And the sovereignty of his position, none can... None can, none can stand. In the book of Matthew 13, 41, the sovereignty, I'm talking about the sovereignty now, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of the kingdom, out of his kingdom, all things that offend them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is one of the doctrines of Jesus Christ. There will be destruction as many that do not accept Jesus as Lord. Because we have to accept him as Lord, a Lord uh, as Lord because for uh, he is the light. God the Father has sent him to die for us. Now, this is darkness. This is light. It's, what, it's just two things now, right? So he said that one person, you are, the light, so you are in the light or you are in darkness. That's why the Bible says he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth the praises of him who have called us. Now, because we believe in him, we are in light. That's why the Bible says in the book of John, say he's the one that lighted one, everyone that is born upon this earth. You, you, he's the light. We born again in him. We, we accept him as Lord, as personal Savior. He's the sovereignty of his lordship is upon them that believe him. But what about those that did not believe him? They might be prospering. They might have ev everything that the world can offer. I'm telling you, Satan is not even after this world. You know, Satan is after them that are in the light because Satan knows that his time is short. That sovereignty that we honor Jesus as for well, Satan is not happy about it. Why would why would God create man in his own image? Why would the sovereignty of of of, of Christ of sovereignty be given to Christ? Why not him? You see, so Satan has always been fighting the church. That's why when you see things happen in people's life, in Christians' life. Please don't complain. This the enemy will fight. Satan does not go where there's nothing. So challenges in our lives, things happen. Hold on to your faith. The Lord will glorify himself. Have I seen? I have seen repeatedly. When there's challenges, I still stand my ground. How many times have they called me in their court? I said, I will not change my message. I will stand whatever the Lord reveals to me. That is what I'm going to preach. I'm not just going to blab and start preaching faith and faith. No. I have to stand whatever the Lord revealed to me because that's why I said when I, when I started, I told all of us, there's a will of God in your life. The will of God in your life must be fulfilled. Don't kind of envy anybody. The one he has given to you, uniqueness in you. He has placed a uniqueness in you to carry that will. So when somebody starts to say, why am I not evangelist caption? Why am I not this person? Why am I not that person? No, you are, you, you are telling God that what he did in you is not good. You see what I'm saying? You just have to remain in him so that he will bring to pass his, his will in your life. And he come with uniqueness and his glory. He's the sovereign Lord. So there's some people that don't want to stay in just like the Bible told us. I think in the book of, uh, I see this, the book of Peter, angels that is the book of Jude. Jude, yes. Look at the book of Jude. I think somewhere in verse 5, 6, or 7, where the angels that did not stay in their own place, that God had placed them, rather, they kind of disobeyed, look for another place. The Lord put them in a place of chain right now. In a place of chain. So, as men that do not remain where God has placed them, you know, the will of God in your life, the spirit of God, as you draw close to God, you see the guidance of your obedience to the Lord, the gift of God be manifesting. Whatever the Lord has placed for you, like He'll be guided because you submit to Him. He is the one that leads. Sometimes you find yourself, some, sometimes do I say, where you, where you find yourself, you keep wondering, how did I get here? I was there before. I'm, I had, you know, the will of God will guide every one of us. For example, if I tell you, if you ask me, how I came out to be, do what I do. If you ask me, I say, I don't know. I don't see the grace of God. Guide me every day. 
And I'm going to tell you, not because everybody come out like I come out. I'm a preacher, you know, but in so many, uh, uh, so many sessions I have, doesn't make me stronger, better than you. You see, it's just that grace. So that will of God must be done as long as we depend on him. We give him the sovereignty. He is the sovereign God. So because he's the sovereign God, have this at the back of your mind. Everything we do, we are going to be joy. So as many that remain in light and make this heaven, the, the, the reward that will be waiting for you but as many that did not accept Jesus even though they say they accept Jesus and they don't want to live right there's a judgment coming for them so there are two ways here right now so that's why Satan is against us serving him because there's a reward there's a place he's the sovereign king of kings he has the kingdom he has set up for us he said in my father's house there are many kingdoms if there if not i would have said i will go and prepare a place for you as you commit in the light in the word of god and your obedience to the word of god the lord guides you so it's your mansion is being set up for you in the kingdom of god so satan is against this because if you go back in the book of revelation satan was casted down and there was war in heaven he cannot go back to that position again he cannot just go back again into you know remain in heaven because he was already casted down so therefore he's fighting against us the church that's that's what i will teach about revelation the, the woman you know when the satan war against the woman and the child that woman there is the church you see and we when we come to that revelation we see so that's why the enemy is fighting against us the church so jesus remains sovereign in your life there will be a day of judgment this is the this is this is this is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And there are people where there will be a place of gnashing of teeth because they rejected Christ. Many are living as if, oh, this world ends here. No. The soul, this soul will not die. The, the soul that, that sin must will die. Why will it die? Because here, there's no more connection with God. That soul will go for judgment. So, a soul that have died is a soul that have rejected Christ. They can't connect with him. So let us understand the scripture very well because the day of judgment for them will come. They will be in a place of total wailing and gnashing of teeth. There will be a furnace of fire. It's meant for the Satan, but because, because they disobey God, but they don't want to accept Christ, they, they will join Satan there. Let me read it again. This is the book of Matthew 13, 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and then we do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It is not meant for them. Who are the people? Those people that do iniquity. Satan is meant for a place of fire, but these people who are going to join them. So this Jesus still remains sovereign, as many that remain in him. We look at obedience. We look at Philippians 2 18, no, 2 8. The book of Philippians will look at obedience in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. All these things I'm naming them, brethren, is in the doctrine of Christ. Let us be very strong. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> there was this young man. There was this young man. Uh, one day, um, he came back from church because they moved from one location to another. Um, he came back. He said, Uncle, I went to this place. You see, air conditioner everywhere. It's a good place. No, talking of people that come there to worship. I look at him. I said, what did you learn in the church today? He said, ah, mom, you started again. I said, yeah, you went, you went to church. Did you go there affiliate with the known or what did you learn in church today? You see, this is a problem. It doesn't matter where you worship. There might be two or three gathered. Jesus is there with them. You are there to serve obedience to him. He is, he is the king of kings. He is the head of the church. We don't go because we want people to notice us. So we want to be very careful, okay? We have the, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, we stand in obedience. Philippians 2 8 said, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Brethren, this is a very strong one. This, you see, when I look at this, I remember this is one of the places uh, I, I, um, there was a time when I told you guys they called me for judgment and I didn't know what was going on. And they were, it's like, why are you preaching? Why are you revealing everything you see about us? Why do you come to the places we have their meeting and you, you, you go and preach about it? I said, yeah, but that's the message that I have. We want you to only speak, speak 
preach faith. We have a lot of things to give you. We make you known all over the world. It was just going on and on and on and on. It was like, I said, please, I'm not interested. Then I didn't know where I was because it was like they would use something to block my face like that. I didn't block my eye. I, I didn't know where I was. It's like, it's like I was caught up like that, you know? And they were just, some, I noticed on my left side voices were talking. On my right side, voices were talking. But I noticed one thing. The people on my right side, like the, they're, they're like the first prophets, right? They say she always speak of what she sees. She always talk about us, what we do, like the, you know, they call us wrong. They were talking, I was kind of thinking. That was when I said, hey, where am I? Where am I? Then the other one of the people on my left side, they happen to be like people like, in the, you can see when we look at them, um, uh, spiritual wickedness in the high places that's what i've used to qualify those they were saying what this is what we are going to do they're going to do this and i'm like well so when they said that uh, that was when i realized that's okay even if i live i die even if i live i'm for christ and i die <laughs> i'm for christ so satan you you because of pride you did not humble yourself before god and you were cast down you know someone that had big man big man the word of god is very powerful i'm telling you I stood my ground. I said, Jesus did not find himself equal with God. He humbled himself and he obeyed God. But he said that he refused to obey God. You know, like a child that is so spoiled with big man that thinks he knows too much. My mouth was just running, but I was quoting the scriptures. And then he hit that, you know, when a judge hit something, or hit, make a decision, you will die and all that. Boom. I said, I will live for Christ. And I will say, if I die, I die for Christ. But I will not accept what you say. I will not accept your offer. They said so many things which I can't bring out here. So that was when the great light shined. When the great light shined, there was something like earthquake everywhere. And that was when I noticed that something that was used to block my face came off my face. And I'm like, I saw my goodness. I saw this eye that is like bluish, beautiful looking eyes. And the light was so, the light was so bright. And I noticed sword like when you see stars going back and forth, pium, pium, they're like angels as the Bible described. And the, as, the, as, a fire, as the fire was going back and forth, you see, that's the sword, you know? So there was this earthquake that was shaky. So when that stuff was taken off my eyes, like a scale was taken off my eyes, then I asked, then I asked, I'm like, Lord, why did you guys leave me here? And he said, I want you to make your decision. I will not impose myself on you. And brethren, it was a wonderful experience. I will never forget that experience. I will never forget that experience. So this, so I, I, anytime I come across this portion of the scripture, I remember that the Lord put this word in my mouth that day. I was able to challenge the enemy. I said, Jesus is so obedient. Jesus is so humble. He humbled himself to God the Father. And that's why God exalted him above every name, including you at the name of Jesus, you must bow. And you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. I stood my ground. And that was, that was, that was, a, I think that was one of the, second time I had such experience of judgment so and that's why when I speak of what the, of power of God I know what I'm talking about brethren stand strong the Lord will never leave you he will not forsake you as long as you stand in him whatever you are going through he is faithful he can never change the only thing that will make as if something is delayed like when some people have confidence in another when you look at God as if some people read the Bible as if it's a story, it's like you read it all, you are all yes, member, you go to church, but you don't have that personal connection. That's why it's as if some people don't know him. When you have a personal connection with him, have confidence, even though you don't have food to eat, you have some challenges, you still know him, he is faithful. You still know him, you have your experience encounter with him, and you know that you are saved, you are not of darkness, you are of light. You don't want to expose yourself, get yourself dirty with things of darkness because he's of light. So you see, with this, I'm telling you, brethren, he is faithful. I'm saying this with experience, okay? So that was another time I have, you know, I was able to say, I now know who I saw. Even being stubborn, yeah, but I know who I know who I serve. With this portion of the scripture, it really irritated that gathering that day. And I will never forget. This thing happened like happened like about 18 or 20 years ago. And from there, I will never forget this. Okay. So the suffering of Christ is even though he obeyed God, he still also went into suffering. Whatever we go through today, we look at Mark 9 12. And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh forth and rest and restored all things. 
and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. He is talking about himself. He's still that suffering. He has he suffered and made sure that he lived like us to show us how we can live to obey God, that in him we can be able to succeed. In him, he is the son of God. He, he is God. He actually came down for us. He suffered for us. And because he suffered, we are exonerated. He became the victim for us to be victorious, like we always sing in song. He is so powerful that when we call his name, his name is above every name. And this is where he humbled himself for him to rise up to be who he is. So even in that he obeyed God, he suffered in all this, even uh, this was what John was kind of he was talking about uh, uh, John the Baptist and, you know, he, he believed, the Bible believed that he came like, before, like Elijah, you understand? So he spoke about him, prophets spoke about him that he has come as done, but he is the son of God, he has come and he has, he has to suffer, he has to die and he said he suffered for nothing, he suffered for the sins of all, not that not the sin he committed, but for our own sins so that's why when we say we forgive our sin the Lord see you that you have accepted this suffering Jesus suffered for us you accepted his death and you are set free and you are of the light, the protection of God is upon you Men, I'm telling you, children of God have strong protection, it's only when people doubt God, when you doubt what God can do, because of what people go through maybe many, many are believing God for one thing or the other, you see they look down on the ability of God, that Jesus even came and died, even as you, we all know in the Matthew 12 20 for as Jonah as, as Jonah, like talk of John you know, who all know Jonah, Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the son of man be there be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, Jesus used Jonah burial in the fish for three days and night as illustration you see the three days and three nights that Christ will spend in the grave himself. This proved that Jesus died. We use the days of the, the one of Jonah. He used it to illustrate, to tell them, hey guys, I'm going to die. And this is the purpose I've come for. They were looking at him as 100% man, even though the letter came to know that he is Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. And this, at a point they realized, this, you know, he was, they were like 70 something, about 72 uh, uh, disciples. But when he was talking about eat his flesh and drink his blood, boom, a lot of them left. What remained? Twelve. Even among the twelve, what Judas is carried out. That's why wherever you find yourself serving God, workers, you will still find one <laughs> that will say, I'm after money. I'm not after what you guys are doing. He performed miracle, right? Yes. Judas is carried was there. Was all disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay? So he came and died. That's why his death has set you and I free. I'm telling you, you need not to die. You die in him. He, he, you die in him. He has given you the freedom. Death from causes. Death from ordinances of the Father. Remember our deliverance hour. Death from every every powers of darkness that's operating. These causes, Jesus has taken them, set you free. This is the mystery that is in the freedom we have that Satan keep confusion in the minds of people for them not to stand in this truth. So Jesus also, there will be resurrection. We all know the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew 7. If you take your time, you can read 9 to 23, but I'm, I'm going to read just 22, 23. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hand of, of men. And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sorry. <laughs> they didn't want him to die. Hey, why are you going to die? But he's telling them this is the resurrection. He, the third day he is going to resurrect. So in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you all this. These are the things we look at in any teaching. He resurrected, and this is where our freedom is. Because he resurrected, death didn't hold him bound. He resurrected. Look at the book of Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Be ye lifted up your everlasting doors. And you look at the book of that uh, Matthew 27. If you go down from 50, the curtain of the temple divide and cut into two, giving us boldness to come before Father. His blood has cleansed us once and for all. No other sacrifice. All these people that tell you, you bring this, you bring that, and you bring that. This are initiation. This are another manipulation Satan set up these demonic deities controlling people to rip people off to what hold people bound into unbelief you see what I'm saying so we want to be very mindful this is our freedom this is our stand he is risen because he's risen you and I we are risen and we are strong and powerful in him let no one deceive you 
I like to teach this for us to understand. The mysteries of power of prayer, brethren, understand who you are. When you know who you are, challenge him by his word. He is faithful. That's why he said, prove me by my word, okay? So we all know that Jesus is going to return. He returned, in the, you know, in the book of Matthew 24. He gave us so many signs that we will see that is going to happen. Because of time, I'm not going to read much of this, of this but I'm going to look at the book of, that's, um, I'm going to look from verse 33. He says, so likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angel of of heaven but my father only he said nobody know when he will return nobody know when jesus will return but mind you he gave us signs when you see this sign when you see this sign when you see this sign no it's a, it's around the corner I will, the son of man is coming back and if you go down the signs indicate that christ is about to return to earth technically refer to revelation of christ and not the rapture now there's i want to separate something here brethren I know I'm going to, when I was doing my study, I made sure I'm going to break this area down for all of us. First Thessalonians 4, 14, 14 to 16 said, listen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring up with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive remain and remain unto the coming of law of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Brethren, I'm going to stop here. We'll continue this teaching because it's a lot of teaching. But what I want you to, let me break this thing down for us. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we talk, we talk of rapture. And after rapture, what happens? We start talking of tribulation. Tribulation, we've seen this sign of the tribulation coming. But there are so many signs Jesus told us. Now, if we look, if we look at it very well, if we look at it very well, when I go back to like the, 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 in the area of, Jesus return. There are signs that gave us the coming of Christ. The trumpet will sound. Please, let's not confuse this. The church age, you and I are in the church age. The grace of God is here with us. We can bind, we can break the chain of the enemy. We have power and authority over the enemy. There are some certain parts of country like Israel does not accept Jesus as Messiah. Some of them are accepting, but the immense Israel do not accept the time of Messiah. That's why Paul was have to send to be messenger for to preach to the Gentiles, those that are not Israelites. That's why if you go back, I want to stress some certain things out. Now, when the Lord showed Peter in a dream or revelation, kill and eat various animals. He said, no, I will not eat their unclean. And he said, who told you they're unclean? What, are this, what is the mystery of this revelation? You guys don't associate with the Gentiles. No, accept the Gentiles. Accept the Gentiles. They are part of us. As they, if they accept Jesus as Lord, they are not unclean. They are clean. You and I fall into this fold. Okay? We are in the church age. In this church age we are in is the age that we, whatever, in, the grace of God is here. Because after this trump, when the trumpet sound, this chapter, the place I've just read, First Thessalonians chapter 4, he said, we, the dead, will rise first. The Lord will be in the cloud. He didn't say we will touch down. In the cloud, in the air. He didn't say it will touch down like the next, the final coming of Christ coming back on the earth. When that trumpet sound, he said, the dead shall rise first. The, remember, I explained in many of the scenes, in the part of Hades, the Lord gave me grace to go and see. It's the path that people, they say they are Christians, they, are, they didn't serve God in truth and spirit, but they were agents, the devil used. And they didn't live their Christian life. Any sin that they been that held them, for them not to be in the place of peace, in a place that they don't have to suffer but stress and please. 
to tell them not to be there, whatever that put them there, that's to the part the, 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 the Lord shows me because if I should go back a little bit in the past, I think that every Christian will make heaven. I think everybody to be the same. But when I started seeing false, all these things that people did in the church, I said, why, why are they doing that? Each one, the Lord didn't even explain it to me. It's from the time to time, he will take me and let's go and see what is going on in this, in this fold. Let's go and see what's going on in this fold. When I see men seeing them and I'm seeing the demons that are in charge of all this, this explained everything to me. And when he brought me out in Hades and I saw why they suffer for what they place in a place, why they are in a place of total torment and darkness, that really explains it more better for me. So if we bring it to our real life now, when this trumpet sound asks me, who are those that are going to, the dead that are going to raise for the Bible said, they that are in Christ. That's what he said. They that are in Christ will do what? Rise first. Then we that are alive will not caught up with the Lord in the air. That phase, that is the church age. Brethren, I want us to understand this very well, okay? Because it is very, very important that we know where we stand. When we know where we stand, you know that any time now, the, any time when the, we will see the great sign, the sign is coming closer. When we come to see like, um, the we come to see, you see, you see this one world government is going on, is gradually, one world religion, Antichrist is putting them together, it's going on gradual, it's going on gradual. So when you keep seeing this, and you see the more, they are claiming more of Christians, they are claiming more of Christians. So you see, it's becoming worse, you see. So these are the signs Jesus really gave us. These are the signs. So I encourage us to be very, very mindful, okay. So like, there are signs during the seven years of tribulation. The seven years of tribulation, is after Jesus has come taking his own and leave them that were careless with their Christian life they were okay they didn't die before even if they died they will not be taken up and those that are uh, that didn't accept Jesus as Lord they will remain it's like they have to face it with their own blood because now in the time of grace, it's the blood of Jesus that we that set us free and we hold on him our Messiah the Son of God he is the one that set us free. But when he goes, those that are not in Christ are going to suffer. So this is the seven, it will go through seven years tribulation. There will be first seven years, uh, first three and a half years, and the second three and a half years, the, the one that will be the great tribulation. So no one knows the time or day Jesus will return. There are signs that indicate Jesus' return is close. This is, I'm going to hold on there. So I just want you to know wherever you are, we'll continue with this uh, part six in our next Friday, in our next session for because of time. But I want you to know all that I've just, we, we have just shared together. I want us to look at it very well that Jesus is the son of God. He is the Messiah. He suffered. He died for us. He's the sovereign Lord, the Lordship. The Lordship of Christ, you give it to him. Don't give it to another. This is where I'm coming to. Because you in him, you, he's the king of glory for you. And you must understand that the spirit of the enemy is all over the world. We know that very well. And what we see today is clear for us to know that there are more diverse spirit of Antichrist. Let me go deep a little bit in this area. Spirit of Antichrist will not come down to the lower people. It goes to those in the, in the top leaders just to look for a way to insert something that will derail their understanding to see themselves to be something else. These are the people Antichrist is looking for. A lot of Antichrist leaders have already placed. Whether Antichrist is born now or not, but the, the, everything is set in place. For example, we look at chips. I know the Lord gave me a message about the chips. I'm going to bring that. That's another message the Lord gave me. The chips, the, the mark of the beast is already set up. So many things have been set up. They, they, the time they were pushing for one word religion, one word money market, is pushing in gradual. It's pushing in gradual. That's why you that study the word of God always stand in the holy place. Stay away from sin. Depend more, depend more in Christ, in the word of God. So that your anything, spot or wrinkle will not mess up your garment. Let sin, do not let sin mess up your garment. Let me read this first Thessalonians again. 
I just want to use it to encourage us. The return of Jesus is around the corner. I'm telling you the truth. We just have to understand that whatever way we live our life, we are going to give account. Whatever words that come out of your mouth, whatever way you live your life, we all are going to we are all are going to give account. So when you live in Christ, look at First Thessalonians four fourteen said, "For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also we sleep in Jesus we, with God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep." For 16 said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, so meet the, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Please, I read this place again, so that we just, it's <laughs> just like, I look, I talk about our ant antenna be, be very, very sharp to be able to pick out the word of God and watch out, wait, what am I hearing? Is this of God? Is it not of God? What did the Bible say? Is it against my confidence in Christ? Is it, is it in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Is Jesus lordship, lordship here? Is, are there kind of seeing that Jesus is the Messiah? What teaching are they giving me? Are they kind of presenting something else to me? This is where your antenna just get be a very alert. So that when you hear that one that is not right, you pull back. You just pull back and cut off. Because, you see, there are so many superficial messages that people just, <laughs> God have mercy. So many superficial messages, they put doctrine in the outward look. That is not the death of Jesus Christ. Take it from me. They look at the outward look. Say, because you put makeup, you are going to hell. That is a pure lie. Go read the book of Galatians chapter 5. Read it. Things of the spirit, things of the flesh. Who will, what will somebody do to make the kingdom of God? Look at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you the truth. Will I, will I not make up, taking care of myself, is it sin? How will it take me to hell? You see, they create teachings that, that, that have put people's faith in something else and not in this death and resurrection of Jesus Christ I'm talking about. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is the Lord of, of the Sabbath. He's the Lord of worship. And you, whichever church where you worship, have it in mind, he's going to return. He is the resurrection and life. He died for our sin. He suffered for us. He obeyed God the Father. You know, he obeyed the God the Father. He is the suffering God. He is the suffering King of kings. He is sovereign Lord over the church. He is the Lord over the church. He is the Messiah. And the Lord of the Lordship over the church is that he is the head of the church. And he humbled himself. Look at the Bible told us the humility of Christ humbled himself. That is wisdom. He don't see himself higher than even he ate with the publicans to do what to be able to win them. Not do what they're doing. But he ate with them. Just stay with them. We have interact in a way that way he was able, they saw the glory. When he communicate with them with the sounding spirit, they see the humility in him. And they were able to say, You are Lord. When we look at this. He is the son of God. We know he's the sovereign Lord of God. When you find yourself in a place that is not of this, I'll tell you, run. We are in the last days. We will continue. There are more teachings on this session that I, I don't want to, I don't want to just jump it, but I want to encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, the coming of Jesus, the sign is everywhere. The trumpet sounded, the taking up, the signs are everywhere. I want you to live your life in Christ not outside Christ. I want you to live your life. You don't worship human being. Don't say because I associate with this group of people, we are the right believers. No, that has, name of church has got nothing to do with it. Sect have got nothing to do with it. Christ is the head. Wherever you are in Christ Jesus, he is the head. This is where you have to understand who you are. And with the scriptures, that's why a lot of people in God's general both school of theology and then in this, the group <laughs> when they ask me a question i say i want you to give me the bible verse don't just throw question don't just kind of with video people there are so many things on the media going back and forth what did the bible say let us use the bible to clarify it so god bless you i'll meet you we all meet in our next session so we can be able to clarify all the 
uh, or, or this session, Christ, the doctrine, he is the son of God. So God bless you. I cover you all with the blood of Jesus. And I pray the grace of God lead you to understand Christ, to understand who you are, to live according to his will. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.